Welcome to Homework Answers. We're going through the textbook Programming Logic and Design, 8th edition by Joyce Farrell. And in this video we're covering Chapter 3, Exercise 5A. Um, I wasn't originally going to do 4 or 5A or 5B, um, but somebody requested that 5 be done. So I'm assuming that's 5A and 5B, so I'll, I'll do that as well. Um, so yeah, uh, this video is for you, Becca. And I've got a flowchart behind this as well that we'll get to in just a minute. But with this problem, what we're what we're given is that uh, you have a person who's sitting in a chair and there's a chair 20 steps away facing towards them and what you want them to do is stand from that chair make 20 steps across the room turn around and sit down in the other chair uh, they do say that this person or robot or you know um, is able to tell if they are touching something I don't think that's detailed enough I mean you're always touching something whether it's the floor or your clothes or anything, and they just kind of throw it in there as like a bullet point or something, and you know, it, it, it's not really, they don't really ask you to include that in the problems, um, but I've, I've gone ahead and included that anyway, just in case. Otherwise, if you look here with the pseudocode, you would basically be taking out this if statement, this first little line here, stand up would be moved over, it would be your first task, and same down here, you would take this out, sit down would be moved over and it would be your last thing you do before stop. But if you look at it here we've got start and we're going to check if you know touching this variable here and this would be like a boolean variable so it would be b o o l if you were to see it declared in the variable section um, is equal to true so if you are touching something basically stand up <clears throat> and then we move on to our loop here and we're using a for loop because we know where we're starting at having taken zero steps and we know how many steps we want to take and we know you know how we're going to increment those steps um, you could do this another way which would be like saying take a step take a step take a step you know over and over and over again and that's just ridiculous you don't really do that in code you would use a for loop so for the conditions are in here that your step you're, you know, you're going to start at zero, obviously, after you stand up. And then as long as your steps are less than or equal to 20, you're going to add, you know, um, or you're going to take a step, you know. And over here, you've also got step plus plus, which is, you know, adding one to however many steps you've taken. And or you know adding one to whatever number is now stored in here. So every time you run the loop, this variable here, whatever stored in that, can change. Maybe it'll be two or three or four as you keep taking a step. Um, once this no longer applies, you would uh, exit the loop, and you would be at your chair, and then you would turn right 90 degrees, turn another 90 degrees right, so you've made a full 180. And you're facing the original chair, and then you check if touching is equal to false. If you're not touching anything, then sit down, and then stop. So that's what the pseudocode would look like. Uh, I did throw this together kind of fast, but I feel like it's it's right about there, or at least a good place to go from. Um, this is what the flow chart's going to look like. You're going to have start, and then you've got if touching is equal to true. You can see this is a decision, you know, if statements. We've got those decision statements. Um, yes, then stand up. You've got your for loop next. You know, as long as these conditions are met, then you take a step and you loop back around until they are no longer working. And then, you know, like if you're on the step plus plus, if it goes, you know, to 21, when you check for it, then that no longer applies and you've got no. Then you turn right, turn right again. And then we've got another decision statement here. So if touching is equal to false, yes, because you're standing. Um, then you would sit down and stop. So that's kind of the structure of the flow chart there. Um, I'll go back to the pseudocode real fast so you can see that. So that, that's sort of how things are going to look. Um, for this, I've used Lucid charts. I know they have a free trial period. You've got Gliffy as well. That's a pretty good one too. So if you need to make flowcharts, that's one way you can do them. Um, 
But that's, that's pretty much it for this one. I'm going to go ahead and do the exercise 5B. But uh, thanks for the request and, you know, just asking. Hopefully this has helped. And um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.